All right, and here's a, a key for some more transformations work. Um, so, uh, yeah, it says for the basic square root function, what function rules will produce functions with graphs related to f in the following ways? So you're just trying to write the, write the function. So you're going to take f, and you're going to move it five units to the right and three units down. So five units to the right says replace x with x minus 5 and then 3 units down that's like a subtract 3 from function so I just get, you know start I guess with um, let's let's recopy what what the original function is so you got square root of x plus 2 minus 1. Okay, so first thing was replace x with x minus 5. So I'm just going to erase the x and I'll put in x minus 5. Okay, and then subtract 3 from the function just says, hey, take what you have there, that whole thing, and, and minus 3 from the end. So if you simplify that, you get the square root of x minus 3 and then minus 4. So this one is in yellow right here. Okay, the next was reflect across the y-axis. Okay, that's going to be um, replace x with negative x. And then up 3, that's going to be add 3 to function. That's a, there you go. So I had square root x plus 2 minus 1. I'm just going to erase the x and I'll put in a negative x. Oops. And then I'm going to add 3 to that function, so plus 3 on the end. So if you simplify that, that's the square root of a minus x plus 2. And then these two can come together, um, the minus 1 plus 3, and they make a plus 2. So this, my answer's here. OK, next one is uh, shift left 2. So that one is going to be um, replace x with x plus 2. Reflect across the x-axis is going to be multiply function by a minus 1. So OK, I got the square root of x plus 2. Make that a little bit bigger. Okay, square root x plus 2 minus 1. So I'm going to erase the x and I'll put in that x is going to become x plus 2. So you got x plus 2 plus 2. And then I got to take that whole function right there and I'm going to multiply it by a negative 1. So if I simplify that, I'm looking at negative 1 times square root x plus 4 minus 1. So I'll use purple. Okay, so the answer to this is this one right here. Negative 1 times the quantity um, square root quantity x plus 4 and minus 1. Okay, uh, one more of those. Reflect across the y-axis and shift right 4 and vertically shrink by a half. So I'll reflect across the y-axis. That's going to be x becomes minus x. Right 4 says x is replaced 
with x minus 4. And then vertically shrink by a half. This is multiply, multiply function by 1 half. Okay, we can do this. So, we might not have enough room, but we can do this. You get your square root x plus 2 minus 1. So x is first going to become a minus x. So that's going to lead to square root minus x, then a plus 2 minus 1. And then I'll replace x with x minus 4. So this is where it gets a little tricky. Square root, OK, I got the minus. And then that's going to become x minus 4. I still got a plus 2 minus 1. So, the, you know, that, that step, that's a hard one, right? Uh, x is replaced with x minus 4. So you found this x, and you replaced it with x minus 4. Now, I had to put in parentheses because of this minus that came before the x. Whatever I plugged in for x, that minus need to be, needed to be applied to all of it. Okay, so, sorry, I'm running out of room here. But before I do that, multiply my function by a half. I want to clean up what I have. Well, I, you know, maybe I can do it in one step, okay? So this is going to lead to one half times what I have. Now, one half times, so in here, is going to be this stuff. Now, as I recopy it, um, I'm going to simplify it. Okay, so... And I don't think you necessarily have to, but we want to show that, okay, the minus went to the x and to the minus 4. So that's a minus x. A minus to a minus 4 makes a plus 4, and that's under the square root. Okay, so square root, a minus x, plus 4. And then you still got a plus 2. And then um, a minus 1. And I could simplify underneath that radical, right? A minus x plus 4 plus 2. That is minus x plus 6 underneath there. Plus 6. Whoa. Okay, square root minus x plus 6. All right. So if you look at, you know, what's in green, if you compare the two, they're, those things, are, they're identical. One is just, you know, the one on the right is, is, is simplified. Um, so that final step was just putting the, the 1 half, which you see in yellow here, out front. You know, showing that it, that's going to get distributed to the entire function there in, in green. So... Our final answer is this box right here. And if you can follow through that one, then nice work. That's a tough one. That's really tough. Um, two, starting with that parabola, uh, quantity x plus 2 squared, write the equations for the following. So, um, you know, this, this says, hey, that's just another way of saying um, replace x with x minus 1. So write the equation and then tell what happens. So I know this is uh, left, no, right. Right 1. And if I take the x and x plus 2 squared and I replace it with x minus 1, so if I replace that x with x minus 1, and I still got my plus 2, that's going to be x plus 1 squared. Next one was just to add 9 to your function. So here's my function, x plus 2 squared plus 9, and that's up 9. Um, the next one says multiply your function by negative 1. So negative 1 times x plus 2 squared, and that's a reflection over the x-axis. Okay, next one says, take your function, replace every x with negative x, and then minus 5. So in my function, I found an x, it'll become negative x. 
So in blue, this is my function with every x replaced with negative x. That is reflect over the y-axis. And then the minus 5, that's down 5. So there's your description right there. Uh, OK, next one. We've got to change f of x into um, g of x. Okay, so f of x is your standard 2 to the x. Um, OK, so it looks to me like we definitely had to uh, reflect over the x-axis to get that shape. So and all we have to do is um, describe it. Uh, so I'm gonna okay, I'm gonna go reflect over the x-axis. So that is going to give me. Let's see. Let's just get some points. So this point is up at three eight. That'll be three negative eight. Okay. Um, I got this point be here. So my basic shape after I just reflected over the x-axis. is this one. Now I've still got a ways to move it. Um, I've seen some students do some pretty creative things here on, on how to keep keep track of this. Um, you know, because it's, it's kind of hard to see how far do I have to slide it to the right and how far up do I have to, to slide it. So if you think of, uh, if you try to find this point right here that I star in black, if you try to find that on the final curve, I think it's going to be right here in orange. Okay, I think that's it. And I know because if I go, I kind of got this little triangle here I can build, right where those are all one unit measurements, and, and so this is over one, down one, here. And this is like the next point. Looks like you got to go. You know, up one and over three. One, two, th you know, three, four. It's really touching. So, one, one, two, three, four. So you do a little work there to to figure out where that point needs to go. So this this initial point that I've identified, it needs to go right. One, two, three, four, five, and up. One, two, three, four. So I'm gonna say right. 5 and up 4. If f of x is 2 to the x, what would the equation for g of x be? Okay, so you got 2 to the x. Step 1 was reflect over the x-axis, so that's negative 1 times 2 to the x. Then write 5, so x becomes x minus 5, negative 1, 2 to the x minus 5. And then up 4 says just add 4 to that. So that is g of x. Right there. There you go. Wow, that was a hard one. Um, the original is shown in plain type and is bold. Okay, so the original, you got to know this is square root of x. And it looks like I'm uh, reflected over both of the all of the axes to get that basic shape and then I got to slide it around just a little so you know if you if you first let's go over the x axis so if you first go over the x axis you get that basic shape then if you go so let's say reflect x axis then if you go over the y axis so this point maps here, this point maps here, and this one here is 9 over, so that looks here. So we have like this basic curve right there in red, so I'll erase that blue one. Now, wow, it doesn't seem like 
my shape is totally going to match. Because right? with my uh, with my one in red, um, this this point right here, I go down one over one to get it. And like the, if I go up to the where I'm supposed to end, I gotta go down two and over one. Let's try another one. So with the one in red, I go down two over four. Well, if I go over four, this is over four, but it's down four. So I had to go like in the vertical direction. I had to go twice as far. Let me let me try to show that once more. So um, the curve in red. If I go down three, one, two, three, I go over nine. So that's three. That's nine. Now I think to get that same effect on the new curve, I'm gonna have to go down twice as much to go over nine. So I'll go down six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now I think I'm gonna have to go over nine to reach it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we definitely did change shape. And it was like it was vertically stretched out. All of the all of those y distances were were tripled. So I've reflected over the x, reflected over the y axis. And I've tripled all of the, um, if I triple all of the y coordinates on the red graph, I'll match up with the shape I'm supposed to get. Okay. Now, look at the origin, right? If you triple its y coordinate, it's not going to move. Okay. So that red graph, I'm going to vertically stretch it by 3. Vertical stretch by 3 which is multiply y's by 3. So if I take every y coordinate on the red graph and multiply it by, I should say, I should have said vertical stretch by 2, sorry. Multiply all the y's by 2, because all of those, those y distances doubled. So, OK. So I got the red graph, and I'm going to do a vertical stretch by 2. So let me erase some of this stuff here. I just want to keep the red graph. OK. So every point's y-coordinate needs to get doubled. So 0, 0 stays the same. Um, negative 1, negative 1 becomes negative 1, negative 2. This y value is negative 2. Now it's going to be negative 4. Pick that smaller eraser. OK, this y value here is negative 3. Now it's going to be negative 6. OK. So I doubled all of the y coordinates. So let's see if I got the right shape now. So I'll go. Um, we'll just go in a thicker pen, and we can. Let's go in green. Let's try. It, see if we can have a little steadier hand in it. Okay. Now I'm. I'm more confident with that shape matching the the one we're supposed to end up with. So now I just, um, if I take this point here, I'm trying to match it with this one here. So it's got to get moved, right? It's got to get moved a little ways. It's got to go back to the right, one, two, three, and up, one, two, three, four, five. Right three and up five. Oh, now i got to write the equation, right? OK. So we're almost there. So I'm going to follow. I'm going to start with square root of x, and I'm going to do all of those things, OK? So square root of x, like if you number these, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. OK, after step 1, 
it's negative 1 square root x. After step 2, it's negative 1 square root negative x. After step 3, it's 2 times negative 1 square root negative x. Then I'm going to go right 3. 2 times, well, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 square root of a minus, and then x needs to become, I meant right 3, so x minus 3. And then up 5 says take what you had and add 5 to it. So negative 2 square root negative x minus 3 plus 5. And that, my friends, is our answer. And that was intense. Okay, we're almost there. Um, okay. I'm looking at 1 over x to start with. Um, and I'm just going to, I need to shift it around to match up the other graph. Now, a couple things I noticed that I'm excited about is, like this diagonal here, that's this diagonal right here. And it, it looks to me like um, the basic shape didn't change. There weren't any, you know, vertical stretches or anything like that. So it's just a matter of sliding it. So I just need to figure out moving this point here to this point here. Okay, that's going to be a slide. And then also, I'm going to have to reflect my, um, my original function over the... Uh, well, either the x or the y. Either way, it wouldn't matter. But if the first thing I do is reflect it, let's say I reflect over the x. I'd have that one and that one. And now it's just still sliding this thing. Okay, So I'm going to go reflect over the x. And then that red point, it's still in that you know the same spot. It's going to go over to the left. A little ways, okay, so you go one, two, three, four, five, left five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up seven. So let's just do those things real quick to one over x. So you start with one over x, then it becomes negative one times one over x. That's negative 1 times 1 over x gets replaced with x plus 5. And then you add 7 to that result. So that's our final one. And those are the transformations that got us there. write an equation for the function. So we didn't have to describe it, but I don't know how I would write the function without first describing the transformations, because they, they tell me how to modify the function. Um, okay. So first, just the transformations to change from f to g. Okay. So if you start with absolute value of x, and you're trying to build g, I'm first going to replace x with x plus 2. So that's... That is going to be left 2. Then I'm going to multiply that by negative 1. And that'll be a reflection over the x-axis. Then I'll multiply that by a third. That'll give me a vertical compression by a factor of a third. So vertical compress by one third. And then minus 4. So I'll put this uh, 1 third and this minus 1 together to make negative 1 third. So negative 1 third, absolute value of x plus 2, minus 4. So that was a down 4. So those are the transformations, and that's the order from top to bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I need to graph the original.
and then I'm going to do those transformations to it. So I'm going to go left to Then I'm going to go reflect over the x-axis. I'm going to go vertical compress by a third, which says cut, you know, multiply all the y-coordinates by a third. So, you know, this point in black here, its y-coordinate is zero. So multiply it by a third and you still get zero. If you find another one that's nice, like, um, like this y-coordinate is negative three, Negative 3 times a third gets you negative 1. So this point actually moves right here. You can pick another one, like uh, this one right here. Its y-coordinate is negative 3. And negative 3 times a third equals negative 1. So it moves to right here. So this thing's symmetrical, and, and, and we see that. So the basic shape now is this, oops, so let me erase some of these intermediate ones, okay, oh goodness, okay, there's a lot going on, we got it though, we're almost there, and then it was just down four, so, okay, take that one out, that one out, okay, so that, that, thicker uh, black line. I'm going to move it down four. So I'm just, I have three points to move down four. One, two, three, four. That was this one down four. One, two, three, four. That was this one down four. One, two, three, four. That was this one down four. So here's my final graph. I'm sticking to it right here. So in green, that's it. Game over. Good job. That was um, that's a tough one there, but thanks for uh, for sticking with it, and I hope that helps. Good job.